The Afghan Ministry of Defence has been showing off the latest in its arsenal of weapons. Not a bad lot, considering the army was only properly stood up two years ago. They've grown by over 114,000 in two years. I mean, that's larger than a lot of European armies today. One man who knows more than most about the Afghan National Security Forces is General William Caldwell, the commander in charge of NATO's training arm. People often ask me, why, why does it take so long to train somebody when the Taliban just picks people up off the fields and recruits them and has them conduct missions for them? And my answer is, the Taliban, all they want to do is tear down. They want to destroy, they want to assassinate, they want to kill. They have no desire whatsoever to build up. The Afghan security forces, they're building up. They're establishing a professional force that's there to serve and protect the people of Afghanistan. In just two years, the police force has grown to 136,000 and the army 170,000. We started with two nations and 30 trainers, and I was one of the 30 in November of 2009. Today, we have just over 37 nations that are part of this effort with people on the ground here working as trainers, uh, with over 1,800 international trainers as a part of this mission, and another 400 scheduled to come in over the next couple of months. The Afghan government wants police and army numbers to total just over 350,000 by next November. The forces will cost around $6 billion a year to sustain, according to General Caldwell. Most of the bills picked up by the Americans, but they're hoping certain factors will reduce that figure. What will the insurgency look like post-2014? If the insurgency goes down, which I think most people believe it will, then I, then I think you'll see a commensurate reduction in the size of the Afghan security force. And with that reduction, obviously, the overall cost start you know, being reduced significantly too. New armored personnel carriers, big guns and aircraft. The Afghans have been handed various new assets, but much could turn to rust if there's no one trained to maintain them. It's an issue the Army's addressing. You know, only about 18% are illiterate. So, you know, 90, 82% are illiterate. They can't even write their name. We have to put them through a, a tremendous amount of education first to get them up to a level to where they can comprehend and assimilate that information and be able to retain it and write notes and read maintenance manuals that it takes about a year process for to produce those kind of Afghans. General Caldwell's been out here for two years, far more than most generals manage. He acknowledges the Afghan security forces have many challenges ahead, but he firmly believes that they will one day stand on their own. You know, whenever you can actually watch, observe and see a change and you recognize that it's going to take and stick, as we say, uh, then you leave far more encouraged and, and, and you feel a real sense of accomplishment of having given something to somebody else to enable them to do that which they really want to do. Mel Preen in Afghanistan for the NATO Channel.